morning, everybody. Welcome back to part three. We, uh, in part two, we did the grinding and got the bevel put in this, got her flattened out. Uh, in this little video, we will normalize the blade and then we'll heat treat and we'll see if we get far enough. Maybe we'll start fitting up handles. So I drilled the holes already for the pins. I figured you guys knew how drill press worked. So I didn't, uh, didn't videotape that. So we'll go get the forge set up. We'll put this in there. We're going to normalize, which is basically that same thing we did at first when we annealed. The normalizing, we've done a lot of weird stuff in here, cutting, grinding, getting hot, you know, so it's exactly what it says. We're going to normalize this. We're going to get all those molecules back in crazy, crazy status kind of a deal. Relieve the stresses. Uh, we still got that little bow in there. I didn't get her out, so we'll see what we look like after the normalization. Then we'll heat treat. So I'm going to go ahead and normalize it and I'll bring you back for the heat treat because you've already seen normalizing and it's fairly boring. All right, we're back. We got our knife normalized. Got a little bit of scale on there, not too bad. And we got over here our forge, our oil. And we've got, I'll take you over there and show you. This is what I'm going to call a straightening jig. When we get this out of that forge, dunk it in that oil. There's always a chance that that knife is going to pick, pick up a warp. So what we do... I've got this piece of straight angle iron. I'm going to take it right out of the oil. We're going to put it on here. We're going to put this one on top. Hopefully not dropping it. Then we're going to clamp these vice grips on there. Just like that. And then we're going to let it cool. And that will hopefully pull any warps out that happen. Now, you, part of the reason we normalize is to avoid getting any warps in this. Well, I'm not that confident, so I figure why not? Cheap insurance, right? I think if I set you up right here, you'll be able to see the whole process. Let's get the forge fired up. We'll start heating this up. That's like I say, I'm gonna give that about a half hour to soak at that temperature. So I'll get the forge set up. I'll let her get hot and then we'll put the knife in there and we'll see how it goes. All right, we got that forge going. I've got her turned way up right now. I'm just bringing it up to temperature. We're going to turn it way, way down once we've got that knife in there because our hardening temperature doesn't require that that forge be really singing like that. But I want to get the whole inside of that forge up to temperature so that once we put that knife in there, we can, you know, we regulate that heat, keep everything at a constant. So I'll bring you back when we put the knife in been about five minutes inside of that forge is looking pretty consistent so I'll turn it down we'll put that knife in there and we'll start bringing her up to a heat and then we'll try to find that that temperature we want to stay at and then like I say 30 minutes later we'll get the smoke show started
Well, that's a lot less violent sounding now. Maybe I can move you up closer and we'll see if we can actually look at that. Yeah, wiggle, wiggle. It's gonna be really hard for you guys to see the color as it's coming up. Because I can guarantee you the difference between what you're seeing on the screen and what I'm seeing in that forge right now that looks screaming hot on the camera. That's about pumpkin orange to my eyes right now, so. That might be because my eyes are already burned out and the camera lens isn't, but you know. I'm gonna take you out of there. Yeah, that's insane, the difference in the color. There, that's, that's representative. That's a little more representative. If we look through these holes, yeah, you can't really see it there either, darn it. Probably a filter I could get to put on here. The end of that knife looks yellow right now to you guys on the camera. It's just orange. It's getting about to where we want it. It's gonna get there quicker because, of course, it's thinner down there. Sorry, apparently I hit the stop button. I've been talking for quite a while. And <laughs> or was it recording? Oh well. So, uh, I'm gonna say we are at about the temperature we want now. I'm gonna pull it out and look at it. Yeah, that's pretty pretty close. We might want it to be a little hotter than that. I think I need to open up the other end. Because that one end's getting a little hotter. We're not getting the heat on this end. I hate this part. It's so scary. I can put that knife in there a little further now and not worry about that end burning up. this end to be cooler down on the handle end because differential heating and cooling will definitely definitely get you a warp I've done a grand total of about 10 knives now and I think I've gotten three or four actually maybe five heat treated the way I want them so a little nerve-wracking just gave her a little tweak on the heat start timing now <clears throat> excuse me I told you to give you acid indigestion I'm gonna start timing now I'll bring you guys back when we quench all right we're there Ben 
just about 30 minutes, a little more, a little less. We let it cool. I'll bring you back and uh, we'll see how we did. We'll check it with a file. We'll check it with a straight edge. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. I'm putting the gloves on just to keep my hands clean. It shouldn't be too hot. I think we're dead straight. Dead straight. Let me go get a rag. Never seems to be a clean rag around when you need it, but it'll work. So I'm liking the fact that that mill scale's peeling right off. That means we're we're getting pretty close to a neutral flame on our burners which is good. Less oxidation, the better. So, now the real test. Did we? Yes, we did. We have a hardened knife. It's hard. Straight. Cool. So now what we'll do is we're going to take this in, hit it with some Dawn dish soap, get all this oil off of it, because now I'm going to take it in, put it in Mama's oven for a couple hours on 365 to temper it to pull some of the heart out of that so that we don't have a knife that's brittle. And let me guarantee you, file steel is brittle. If you don't temper it, it's going to break. At the very least, you're going to chip edges. So I'm going to stop messing with that so I don't drop it. Because if I drop that right now on the concrete, there's a pretty good chance it'll explode. So I'll go clean it up. We'll throw it in the oven for a couple hours. I'm going to, I'm going to clean some of this scale off so that we can see what color this goes back to when we temper it. We want it to get to a straw yellowish straw color it's a very light color but hopefully we'll be able to see it so hey let's do some more there it is in all of its glory inside of a little pan just sitting there how boring welcome back ladies and gentlemen we are done with the tempering as you can see, we got a little bit of a straw color on there. Two hours at 365 in mama's oven, and we're ready to go. So the next video, we're gonna be putting some handles on it, grinding it, making her a finished knife. That's kind of what I'm thinking for the handles. We'll see if I can figure out how to do that. Appreciate you watching. We'll see y'all in the funny papers. Now go out and get you some.